Canada's ecosystems are being threatened by the relentless spread of feral pigs, and the impact is becoming increasingly difficult to ignore. But how are Canadian farmers responding to the feral pig crisis? Let's explore their strategies. After a three and a half month gestation period, a wild sow gave birth to eight piglets on a farmer's land. And within a week, the piglets were roaming around, learning to walk and gnawing on the plants scattered around the area. They dug into the ground to find their favorite plants and eagerly munched on insects clinging to the leaves. Soon, the piglets found their way to the lake shore, drinking water and looking for more food. But in the process, they turned the lake shore into a polluted, muddy puddle. With their powerful snouts, they dug deep into the mud in search of larvae and worms, disturbing the delicate balance of the soil. The damage caused by these animals has become a pressing concern for Canadians everywhere. So, what measures are being taken to stop them? Canadian farmers have begun installing cameras around areas where feral pigs are active, closely monitoring their destructive activities and keeping an eye on locations that are now attractive destinations for other feral and invasive species. Farmers observe these areas for days at a time, trying to understand the feral pig's behavior, especially as the animals become more active at night, often coming out to forage in small, worm-filled swamps as part of their natural feeding habits. Once the size of the herd has been determined and their movements tracked, farmers begin the difficult task of setting traps, a process that requires considerable skill and experience as wild boars are very sensitive and extremely wary of anything unfamiliar. To answer these questions, we observe traps baited with large amounts of grain the scent of which lured each boar, weighing between 110 and 100 key 30, into the trap. When one boar entered, the others quickly followed, although sometimes they sensed danger and ran away, only to return when they felt safe. When the trap finally collapsed, chaos broke out as the panicked, desperate boars tried to smash the trap door and escape. It was a clear warning that anyone encountering a boar in the wild should stay away to avoid a dangerous confrontation. Despite the best efforts of farmers, trapping can only slow the number of wild boars but cannot stop them completely and they often escape blending into dense forests and mountains where they find safety among dense trees and dense bushes, becoming more and more elusive with each season.
Years of hunting have honed their senses. Every rustle of leaves, every movement of the wind, even the slightest whisper, puts them on high alert and ready to, to run. When a member of the pack senses danger, it will signal to the others, causing the pack to scatter in an instant, sometimes even swimming across streams to escape. Hunting wild boar in such rugged terrain is a real test of skill and patience, especially since the animal is very familiar with the terrain and takes advantage of every advantage of its natural environment to stay ahead of its pursuers. For the hunter, it is both a thrilling and tiring chase, requiring not only technique and agility, but also a deep understanding of wild boar behavior, as well as discipline to respect the delicate balance of nature. The forest is not only home to wild boar, there are also many deer sharing this space, and sometimes two farmers will climb up to the observation deck and wait patiently, watching the huge herd below. Spotting these herds of wild boar is both a challenge and a thrill, as one counts the piglets hidden among the adults. A reminder that hunting wild boar is both an adventure and a struggle, requiring stealth, endurance, and the ability to track these intelligent animals by footprints and scent. The hunt itself becomes an exciting competition between man and beast, where the hunter must move quickly and accurately, using traditional or modern weapons to achieve quick, humane results, but always aware that real hunting must respect the rules of environmental protection and wildlife conservation. Oh yeah, oh, cool. that's awesome. When a hunt is successful, it is not just about collecting food. It is a moment to reflect on one's own patience, technique, and experience facing the wild and the harshest challenges. However, it is important to remember that any hunt must comply with strict regulations to ensure the sustainability of this activity and the preservation of Canada's natural heritage.
Go ahead. There you go. In some places, a truly unique method has been used to slow the growth of feral hog populations. Dogs equipped with GPS trackers have been released into the forest, allowing them to chase and hunt feral hogs, as dogs are one of the few predators that truly terrify the animals, striking with lightning speed and pinpoint accuracy. Quick work. Making a move, it's showing them caught right there. It looks like it's open. But we can't tell for sure. We'll see. Florida open is a little bit different. We need Garmin. Yeah. 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 And it don't have any ears, so it made nope. it harder to catch for the dog. Correct. Oh. All right. Barren sow. No eared we gotta come, barren sow. We gotta come back and get some pigs. Not to be overlooked, black bears have also had a significant impact in Canada, reducing the feral hog population by about 2%. And with their impressive strength, dogs are even better equipped to catch and control these animals, as seen when a brown dog took down a young feral hog in a dramatic nighttime chase. Two, three. Nice! Which of these strategies do you think it is most effective in controlling feral hog populations? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below and stay tuned as we continue our fascinating journey into this wild world.